Hi, my name's Mark, and welcome to the channel. Today, I'm sitting down to wind some yarn and have a conversation with you. Let's get into it. Today I'm winding some of my favorite yarn. This is Woolstock from the company Blue Sky Fibers, and this yarn has been my favorite for a while now. Here's the tag. On the back of it you can see the details of the yarn. This is color Driftwood, and it's a worsted weight wool, non-superwash. I think it's great to work with. I have lots of projects made out of different colors of Woolstock, and it performs really well, at least for me. So let's get started with some winding. Thanks so much for all of your interaction with the last video I posted the last time I sat down to wind yarn. I really enjoyed hearing your stories. Some of you had awful yarn shop experiences, but I really loved seeing how many of you had great yarn shop experiences. Um, I'm super lucky to have a handful of great yarn shops in my life. So that's my hope that everybody can find a place where they feel comfortable shopping, a place where they get excited about what's there and uh, they can enjoy their crafting even more. So thanks so much for having that conversation with me. I loved seeing responses and I didn't get the chance to respond to many because the video really took off and uh, in time I might be able to have more response to the things you shared with me there. So thank you again. Today First of all, I was going to say I feel like I'm coming to you live from the Outback Steakhouse. Uh, my hair, when I'm looking at my monitor, it's very onion loafy today, uh, bloomin' onion. So that's what's on my heart, the first thing I'll share. Thanks for joining me here at Outback. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about our origins of crafting. How did we get our start? Where did we learn? Uh, what made us love? crafting, working with fiber, doing some sort of handcraft to begin with. So tell me in the comments, fill in the side of the conversation of how you got your start, and I'm going to sit and tell you a little bit about my journey into crafting, knitting, and crocheting. So I grew up as a pretty crafty child, uh, a sort of typical young gay. I loved twirling baton, I loved making friendship bracelets, if it was anything craft or craft related, I was into it. Um, I loved walking up and down the aisles of craft stores and looking at all of the DIY kits, everything you can imagine. And I just thought, that's what I want to do. <laughs> all of those things were calling my name. I actually remember when I was a young child, young kid, probably early elementary school aged, one year for Easter, in my Easter basket, I got a beading kit for making bracelets and necklaces. And I, <laughs> I was so excited because I felt like the Easter Bunny understood me more than Santa. The Easter Bunny understood me more than my parents because he brought me a crafting kit. He brought me this beading kit, which is something that I don't think my parents normally would have given me. So I appreciate them. Uh, feeling generous and getting me that very fun activity that at the time probably seemed something a little odd to give to a boy. Um, this was in the 90s, but I'm super grateful. So thanks mom and dad, thanks for the beating kit, and a big thank you to the Easter Bunny. Loved it. So as a kid I loved anything craft related, and I know a lot of people who knit and crochet have learned the skill from a parent or a grandparent, um, maybe another family member, an aunt or an uncle. But in my case, I don't know of anybody in my family that was already knitting or crocheting. My mother sews really well. She grew up um, hand sewing and then doing a lot of great machine sewing. I know she used to make prom dresses for people. She would do um, curtains and drapes for people's homes. But I don't know that she ever spent time knitting or crocheting. She might have learned the skill, but it wasn't something that she was doing, at least when I was growing up. So I didn't pick up knitting or crocheting until I think I was about 12, 
and it was from a Cracker Barrel. We used to go to Cracker Barrels fairly often on road trips when my family was uh, taking a trip to visit extended family members or go on a vacation. We were in the South, the Southeastern United States, and so Cracker Barrel was a really common stopping point. So I would love looking at the, the old country store, as they call it, and I loved the DIY things. I liked the, um, oh, I forget what it's called, the loop of string where you do Jacob's Ladder and, and those other things. Um, I loved that sort of thing. I liked the, the books, the how to braid hair, whatever it was. And I guess they had a book on crochet. So it was pretty kid friendly, big pictures, easy instructions. And it probably came with maybe 50 grams of yarn and a crochet hook. So from that, I learned how to chain, single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. And that's where it stopped. I didn't have any other resources at that time to see what else you could do with crochet. So I would literally crochet back and forth, making the most boring scarves you've ever seen. Um, and that's all I could do. I didn't know how to change color. I didn't know how to do any sort of decorative stitches. I could, I could kind of tell how to freehand and make the work grow wider or taper, but I don't think I was doing any of the increasing or decreasing in a smooth way. I think whatever I had created was pretty rough and um, it didn't lead to much artistic fulfillment. It was fun and it definitely passed the time and it was a good way to get into um, the dexterity and the, the muscle memory and the use of that fine motor movement for crochet. So uh, I just got bored with it. I would crochet all the time and I had a ton of yarn, mostly things people would give me, and I had a bunch of random hooks, again, from uh, yard sales and someone passes away and they leave a whole tub of uh, knitting needles and crochet hooks and so this would you know wind up with me through somebody in the community or somebody from our church. But I didn't know what to do with this stuff. I wish, wish, wish I had had a great book about granny squares or um, mosaic crochet or how to do any sort of color changing. I think it would have opened up the world for me to be much more expressive and more fulfilled through that craft. So that was my initial start into fiber arts when I'm about 12 years old with crochet. And after that, I didn't really keep it up because, again, I wasn't fulfilled by it. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't making things that I was excited about. It was just back and forth, so I made scarf after scarf after scarf. So <laughs> fast forward to um, my mid-twenties, and I was living in the United Kingdom for a year as a choral scholar at a cathedral. So I had studied music in undergraduate, and I had applied to a couple of graduate programs that I really wanted to attend, but I hadn't been accepted. So the plan was to just keep working and keep practicing, studying, until I could find a graduate program that felt like it was worth investing in and making the move for. So I ended up in England, in Hereford, which is a city on the Welsh border, on the western part of England. And I was there for the year to sing at Hereford Cathedral as a choral scholar. So this was sort of a, a student opportunity. I made very little money, I made a stipend, and I had a place to live. And my job was just to sing. We would sing church services every day, we'd sing choral even songs, and it was a great experience. It was one of the best years of my life. I loved living in the United Kingdom. It was just a great experience all around, and I would go back in a heartbeat. So while I was there, I had quite a bit of free time, which was another nice thing about this year. While I wasn't making a lot of money, I could sustain what I was doing for the year, and I used it as an opportunity to continue my voice study, uh, apply to graduate programs, and be able to spend time writing the essays and um, preparing for the auditions, traveling to interview and audition, etc. But otherwise, I had a lot of free time. So while I was there in England, uh, my housemates and I would cook every day. We had a fairly small refrigerator, so we would go to the store, walk to the store every day, pick up food, um, cook together, 
it was really nice to build some of those skills that I hadn't necessarily figured out for myself when I was busy in high school or busy in college. And something that I wanted to pick up while I was there was knitting. I had watched a movie, and in the movie there was a scarf, just a, a striped, ribbed scarf, knit one, purl one, ribbing. And I thought it looked great, and I loved that it looked rustic, I loved that it looked handmade, and I don't know, I just had a feeling inside myself that I wanted to make that. I want to try to knit and use this free time to maybe build a new skill. So that weekend I went to the market in town and sort of farmer's market set up where people have um, produce and goods that they've made, and there was um, a stand with yarn, yarn and knitting needles. So I picked out two colors I liked and got my knitting needles, and I really didn't know what I was doing, so I probably picked a needle that didn't match the yarn, you know, a needle size that was way off from the gauge of the yarn I was going to use, um, but it worked out. So I still have that scarf, which I'll cut to a clip of in this video. And I remember, I think I had something like 40 stitches in one row, knit one, purl one across, and I, I sat doing my stitches and I felt so slow. I felt so discouraged because it seemed so awkward to try to use the needles, it's so awkward to try to keep any sort of tension, even tension, and I would time myself and my first row across, my 40 stitches, would take something like 12 minutes, 15 minutes, and I thought, I am never going to make an entire scarf if it takes me 15 minutes to get across what was sort of one modest row. But I kept practicing. I thought, I'll invest in this, I'll go slowly, I'll try to give myself the grace, give myself the patience to pick up a new skill. And uh, I remember measuring maybe two weeks later, timing out how long it took to do a row, and it was something like seven or eight minutes. And I thought, okay, I've cut the time in half. I'm obviously getting better, getting stronger. And that gave me a lot of encouragement to keep going. It's not gonna be so slow, so tedious forever. Uh, so that's the gist of it. That's how I jumped into knitting. And I learned through YouTube videos, um, which is one reason I wanted to come onto YouTube and, and start doing tutorials and have some sort of presence here because it was the gateway to get me into something that I really love and something that fills up a large part of my life now. So fast forward to the end of the scarf, and at that point, I felt like I had the rhythm of things down. I wasn't a pro. I still needed to learn a lot and wanted to learn a lot, but I did feel comfortable. I felt like I could pick up my needles and I knew what to do. Uh, I knew how to get started. I could recognize small mistakes and try to you know fiddle to fix them if I needed. So we were really lucky to have a great yarn so uh, great yarn shop, excuse me, in Hereford. And I was so nervous to go in. <laughs> and I went to get yarn for a new project. And I ended up picking up, I think it was some Rowan felted tweed, a DK weight wool. And I didn't understand what DK meant. I didn't understand the double knit. So I thought it was a requirement that if I was buying DK weight yarn, I would need to buy double the quantity and hold it together. You know, double it for double knitting. I just didn't know. And I was very uh, apprehensive to ask questions. So I picked up yarn and I remember spending a fortune <laughs> to double the amount of yarn I needed for a sweater for myself. And the next thing that didn't make sense was that I was going to make a sweater and instead of finding a pattern that someone had written, I just thought it would make more sense for me to figure out a pattern as I went, which in hindsight seems crazy. I would not recommend that for a beginner. I think if you are on track as a beginning knitter or crocheter, it's good to find a teacher if you can or find a friend who can uh, check in, give you pointers if you need them, and recommend really great, well-written, beginner-friendly patterns so that you're not doing so much experimentation on your own, you can follow somebody else's prescribed pattern and then reach your end goal probably a lot faster. 
there is something to be said for figuring out on your own, sort of the Elizabeth Zimmerman way of understanding structure, understanding how to create your own patterns and adapt your own patterns. But as a very beginner, it's nice to have a couple successful projects before you get in maybe too deep. Granted, that's not for everyone. Everybody comes at things different ways. And for me, it worked out. For a lot of you, I'm sure it works out that way. Anyway, if I could go back in time, I probably would have asked for advice to find a good straightforward pattern. But I wanted to create something of my own. And I don't know, I felt like I was really challenging myself to build a new skill set and do something from scratch. So I ended up making a sweater. And I knew at this point that I was going to go to graduate school at the University of Notre Dame in um, Indiana. And I wanted to make a varsity style collegiate sweater. So I found some videos on YouTube, and I'll link them in the description box below. I don't remember the name of the designer or the teacher off the top of my head, but they were a really great resource. A whole series of videos showing you how to take your measurements and then calculate your pattern for a sweater that will fit you nicely. And it was really fun to dig in and feel like I was in a virtual class, learning this new skill, challenging myself to create a pattern, and still at the same time, learning how to knit um, in a more, I don't know the word I'm thinking, just to knit in a more consistent way to sort of establish my technique because I was still a beginner. And the sweater process was really fun. I'll drop some pictures of it into this video. Um, I have the sweater, I think I wore it in a video a month or two ago. It's a really thick sweater because I was holding my DK weight yarn double, so it's a sort of bulky weight in the end. It's very stiff, very wooly, <laughs> and uh, it's not the most comfortable thing to wear, but I think it's beautiful and it means a lot to me. It represents that time in my life when I was learning this new skill, which again is now a huge part of my life. Um, so it was a lot of fun, but I think I would have saved myself a lot of heartache and headaches if I had worked um, a pattern, a, a well-written pattern, instead of trying to create my own at that time. So this shop in Hereford was a great place, a great community for me to build those skills. I remember as I was working the sweater, I would run into all sorts of issues. I would have moments where my stitches were twisted the wrong way, and I couldn't figure out why that was happening. I couldn't figure out how to remedy that. So I would go in and nervously ask if they could take a look at my work, and they were so helpful. I mean, they took the time to compliment, uh, compliment me on what I was trying to do and uh, understand my goal and then give me great advice and help troubleshoot those issues. So I love that. I'm, I, it's such a warm, fuzzy place for me to think of that support I had and that early guidance when I was just trying to figure out this path. And so after going in for a few weeks in a row and asking these questions, um, one of the associates asked if I wanted to come to their knitting group, their knitting club that meets at the Green Dragon Hotel, which feels so British. I love that. And I said, sure, absolutely. I would love to come. And I was so nervous. I remember telling my housemates how nervous I was to go um, just because I didn't know what to expect. I thought, I imagined the group would not be much like me. I didn't think it was going to be um, a bunch of young men in their 20s knitting. And so I thought, are they going to be upset that I'm, gonna, that I'm there? Are they going to be, um, I don't know, are they going to be welcoming to a new person? Because a lot of groups are happy as they are, and they don't necessarily want newbies showing up all the time. <laughs> so I was nervous. Felt like sitting at a different lunch table um, or going to a different school and then figuring out where can I sit, where do I fit in. So I went and it was such a good experience. I mean, these ladies, uh, they were all ladies and most of them were uh, probably retired age, um, which again was drastically different from where I was in life. And they were so kind, so welcoming, and it was such a helpful community to have. I had so 
well, not so many questions, but I was doubtful of so much of what I was doing. And to have these ladies give me their tips, show me their favorite ways to cast on, um, help take a look at my work and give me advice about um, the sizing of it and, and when I should move on to the next portion of the pattern or how to pick up stitches more easily. It was so helpful. It was really invaluable. And again, it feels almost dreamy now. This is uh, right now about mm, five years, six years since that happened, six years since I started knitting. And looking back, it was just such a beautiful experience. It felt like something out of a movie. It felt like something out of a, you know, a beautiful story. So I'm just so grateful for that. Um, I'm excited I'm going to England this summer um, to sing with a church choir. We're doing a residency in Durham. And I think following the trip, my parents are coming over and we're going to do some sightseeing. And my husband and I are trying to see, trying to plan if we can stay in the country for an extra week or two just to have time to go back to Hereford, hopefully reconnect with some of the people that I would spend time with there. And we're also hoping to go to lots of yarn shops. So that's super exciting for me. I'm excited to see a lot of shops, hopefully get some good souvenir yarn. And I really hope that I can take you along with me and um, get some footage, um, getting an experience of these shops and what they each offer to their community. So that's uh, essentially my story for the day. I wrote down some short notes. I think that's most of what I wanted to share. I'd love to hear your story. How did you get into crocheting? How did you get into knitting? Um, if knitting or crocheting isn't your craft or your hobby, how did you get into what you do? Um, is it something you figured out on your own? Are you a big YouTuber um, watching DIY videos? Or do you have great classes and resources where you live? So let me know. I'd love to hear more of your story and keep this conversation going. I really appreciated so much of the feedback that I got from the last time we sat down to talk. Um, I feel so bad for all of you who have had uncomfortable experiences trying to find your place in a crafting community. I mean, there's no apology for that. And again, I'm really glad for those of you who have great stories, um, great experiences of wonderful mentors and resources where you live or where you travel. I think when I started crafting, things seemed much more divisive. People seemed much more snarky, um, sort of gatekeeping what they did or passing a lot of judgment on people for the way they choose to go about their craft or the supplies they use for their craft. But I'll tell you, I have been so overwhelmingly affirmed by the community I found on YouTube. So I, I get really nervous before I post some of these videos because I think people have free will to say whatever they want to me. They can leave whatever kind of comment they'd like. And some people online, when it's anonymous, are completely unhinged. <laughs> and... Uh, it's shocking. It can be a little hurtful, but mostly I sit back and I think, okay. <laughs> I think it's that anonymity playing its part that most people wouldn't say anything too ridiculous to someone's face, but if it's anonymous, if you're behind a keyboard, it can be a lot easier to just spew something out there. So I'm so grateful that when I post a video, I open the comments and overwhelmingly it's so kind. Uh, it's amazing to see people who want to spend some time with me, want to hear my stories, want to ask questions, or share their wisdom with me. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for spending some time with me. And again, I hope that you will share a little bit of your journey in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. I wish we could all get together and just sit in person. Um, and maybe one day some of us can, depending on where you are. Okay. Here's my yarn today. I'll put the cakes here in front of me. These are enormous cakes of yarn. Each, each hank was 150 grams, which I love. I love that Woolstock does 
150 grams of some of their colors because for sweaters, it means you have um, far fewer ends to weave in, which is great. So here's my yarn. This is the color that I'm going to use for the Oban sweater from Thea Coleman. So I'm excited to jump into that project. I'm excited to be here with you today. Thanks so much for watching. If you have topics you want to hear me discuss um, or start the conversation on in future winding videos, please let me know. I have some ideas, but I'd love to hear what you want to talk about and what discussions we should start. Thanks for being here with me. If you haven't already, I'd appreciate you taking the time to subscribe to the channel for future videos. And again, happy crafting, happy knitting, crocheting, quilting, whatever it is you do. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I brought my sweetie in to see you. When I wind or when I make videos in here, he's waiting right outside the door. I hear his little chirps. I hear his little face dragging on the floor trying to see under the door. So here you are. What do you want to say to everyone? What do you want to say? Okay. <laughs> there you have it.